Welcome to lecture 44, out keyword. So in this lecture, I'm starting off with the code from the last lecture on pass by ref using the ref keyword. And that's because the out keyword essentially does the same exact thing. It allows you to pass a value type variable by reference, except it's slightly different. There's one slight change. And the change simply comes from the variable that you're passing by reference does it have a value or does it not have a value for when what i mean what i mean by that is what if student's grade had no value meaning let's say the student's grade had a zero or nothing at all if i remove the grade there you can see that ref when you pass by ref using the ref keyword it throws an error i'm getting an error in it the, the error is that you only can use the ref keyword when the value that you're, or the while the variable that you're passing in has an a, initial value. So because student's grade does not have an initial value, ref is throwing an error. But as soon as I give it that one or whatever it is, it's happy again. So the ref keyword requires an initial value. However, if I do want to do it with no student grade, and basically having no student grade, I'm, I'm going to give student grade in a value at, at a different point. I can use a different keyword. I can use the out keyword. So if I change this to out and I change this to out, it's now going to also basically pass by reference. However, I'm using a different keyword now. So you can see I'm getting an error. And if I highlight over the error, it says the out parameter student grade must be assigned to before control leaves the current method. So by using out, it allows us to actually assign the initial value from the function itself. So inside of main, it's just a blank variable in there, but inside of the function itself, we can define the variable inside of here. It's called out because many people use this to send back multiple values. So the return type can only return one value, but if you use multiple outputs, you can return lots of variables. But it basically is the same type of thing as ref. It just does not have an original value. I have to give it the original value here. So I'm going to say, just this is not this does not make logical sense at all. But I just want to show you the example. If I say students grade equals zero first, and then I add the extra credit to it, now everything's happy. So using the out parameter. It's basically still passed by reference because this student grade in here will now have three when I print it, which I'll show you here in a second. But it allows the variable that you're passing in to have absolutely no value. But because it has, it has no value, you have to assign it its value inside of the function. So I first, I give it its assignment right there. And then it, when I run it, we'll see that three gets sent back through the output parameter. Like I said, people use this a lot for sending back many return values. For example, let's say we wanted to build the adding program again with an output parameter. Yes, I know I could use a return value, but I want to build it using an output parameter. So how would this look? Let me delete this code first. So I'm going to say, I'm going to I'm going to make this function actually to make it use the output parameter. I'm going to make it add and multiply the two numbers together both times. So we have two values now. So if, I'm going to say public static void. The reason why I'm not saying int is because if I return the value, I can only send back one of the answers. I can only send back either the numbers added together or the numbers multiplied together. You only can send back one value. So I'm going to say void there because I'm not going to send back anything. I'm going to use output parameters instead. So I'm going to say add and multiply. And it's going to take in two numbers, int x or int a, int b, and then the answers. I'm going to say out int added, out int mult. So basically, they, they are going to um, give me two numbers. I'm going to send back the answer of them added together through the added parameter. And I'm going to send back the, the multiplication one through the mult parameter. And the way I can do that is because I'm saying that they're output parameters. And that means that the when you pass them in originally, they have no value. So I'm going to assign the value in here, and then it goes back to them. So let's say added 
equals a plus b. So I'm saying this variable right here, the value of it is a plus b, and mult is equal to a times b. So multiply will have the answer of a times b. So now how I call this is if I say add and multiply 5, 10, I need two output parameters. So I need two variables to hold the answers. I'm going to say int add, int mult, and then I'm going to pass those in. So I'm going to say out add, out mult. So now these the answers of add and mult get sent back through these parameters. That's why they're basically passed by reference still. Well, that's that's why I consider them passed by reference still. So when I actually say console.write line add, and then I say console.write line mult, I'm gonna get the answers properly. So five plus ten is fifteen, and five times ten is fifty. So my function did both adding and multiplying. And then I sent them both back by using output parameters. But they still have the same idea of pass by reference built into them. But the general use of them is doing something like this.